Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So this week we're doing kind of like a wine versus beer week. So um, as you may know, wine and beer were both options um, in the ancient world, but the thing was that they weren't always options together. So we kind of take um, for granted the fact that we can go somewhere and choose wine or beer and they might be you can get them of a similar price even though generally really nice wine um, is a lot more expensive it wasn't really that way in um, the ancient civilizations because for a lot of reasons there was really one or the other was popular so for instance in ancient Mesopotamia um, it was really just uh, beer that was popular, and in ancient Egypt, beer was popular. And although wine was um, sometimes there, it was really quite seldom there, and it was definitely just meant for the highest levels of society, or um, actually for uh, religious purposes. So that would also kind of maintain its prestige factor in the areas that it was. So. Why did some places have beer and some places have wine? Um, I have an image here for you that I did post on my Twitter a long time ago, but you all loved it and retweeted it so much. Um, I thought I'd bring it back just to kind of show you um, as an example. So this is kind of where, um, sorry for all the post-its. This is um, the general areas that grapes are grown in. Um, and as you can see, it's about from 30 to 50 degrees um, north and south, um, and those are the general areas um, that grapes can grow. So obviously within those areas, there would have been natural um, kind of wild vines that then were cultivated in order to create um, wine as we know it today. But if you didn't really have vines there to begin with, and vines really weren't growing for some reason, you were probably turning to beer. Um, so it was mostly kind of a climate climate kind of uh, driven idea, whether people liked um, or, or drank uh, beer or wine, and then from there it became kind of the custom. So for instance, it said that Dionysus turned away from Mesopotamia because they liked um, beer. Well, it's not just that they liked beer, perhaps beer was really what was available to them at the time. We actually do have um, confirmation and kind of uh, little notes left over that tell us that, for instance, the Gauls. The Gauls drank beer, um, but the kind of barbarians, when they had wine, they loved it. They thought it was so delicious. They didn't necessarily think that it quenched their thirst in the same way, um, but they definitely loved the taste. And the interesting thing about this is, this opened up kind of an opportunity for a type of, not dishonest, but just a different type of kind of marketing, because if you could sell kind of not so great wine to a palate that was used to barley beer, um, and you could kind of market it as like, woohoo, it's wine, um, and they didn't necessarily know yet the differences between these kinds of things. Um, it was definitely something that a lot of wine merchants were interested um, in doing. And not only were they kind of separate, but wine and beer um, at some points, very seldom, but at some points were actually combined. So I know it sounds gross, but the way they did it was kind of interesting. So it's something from ancient Mesopotamia, and it's called um, Karunu. And um, this is kind of when you take a beer, and then you take um, essentially grape serum, grape syrup, uh, just some kind of concentrated grape or wine and you put it into um, the beer. It makes the beer stronger, it makes the beer sweeter, um, and it was definitely kind of a middle ground for people that wanted something um, a little different from just wine or just beer. Um, so where kind of were the lines of where this happened? Well, apparently um, the wine drinking culture happened outside um, the borders of um, outside the boundaries of ancient Mesopotamia, um, around the boundaries of the alluvium, and it's thought that the wine and beer kind of border uh, met at um, the Euphrates along the Syrian and Iraqi border, um, and 
along the Tigris. So definitely people were kind of climactically in one camp or the other um, based upon what was available to them. And then obviously various um, features such as uh, cultural or religious ideas got wine to be more popular or beer to be more popular. Um, but one interesting thing I wanted to add at the end was that every culture of course had its own accoutrement as we say. So it had its own kind of um, little things you could buy to make drink your drinking process um, a bit more enjoyable, so to speak. So in both beer and wine, there was kind of a problem of sediment, so to speak, and it just, it wasn't necessarily as clean a process as we have today. Um, and so with ancient wine drinkers, they had something called the side sprouted strainer jug. Um, and this was just a jug, and it had just a little spout as it, sounds like um, and there was a strainer inside big surprise um, and so then when you poured your wine out um, and into your cup or whatever you were drinking it out of um, the strainer would kind of catch the different um, sediment that was in there or anything that was in there that you really didn't want to be drinking um, so with beer it was a similar concept but something a little bit different in that they essentially had beer straws um, so it was kind of like a hard um, metal rod that was hollow and at the bottom of the rod there would be kind of like a cloth or um, some type of straining material and you would actually suck the beer up through this straw type ordeal um, and it would make sure that you didn't get anything nasty in there that you didn't want to necessarily be drinking. Um, so obviously there were problems with both beverages but people, enterprising people, always find a way to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, so I hope you enjoyed learning learning about the history between wine and beer um, and give it a big thumbs up if you did. Subscribe because there's always more lectures coming your way and I'll see you next week. Cheers!